Welcome to Forgotten Hollywood on Therapy Cable. This is the Hollywood Backstory. This is the story of a man who could have been broken by life, but wasn't. A fighter. Strange then that this is also a love story, and a damn good one. A true story of former middleweight champion Joey Giardello, once baptized the bad boy of boxing, who redirected his life for the benefit of his son Carmen, born with Down syndrome. Joey became the middleweight champion of the world, but not before he learned an important life lesson, how to be a father for a special needs son. Welcome to Forgotten Hollywood, streaming on the Therapy Cable Channel. Here's your host, Manny Pacheco. Welcome to our program. I'm Manny Pacheco. The Forgotten Hollywood journey, of course, takes us all over the place, including a book series that I'd love for you to read that tells America's story through the eyes of character actors from Hollywood's golden age. Also, a weekly radio show on 90.1 FM KBPK and a blog site that you can find on ForgottenHollywood.com. Joey Giardello was a former member of our armed forces who rose to become the middleweight champion of boxing. Despite having a difficult private life, Giardello married and became a family man. When his son was diagnosed with Down syndrome, he became a champion of a different kind. Today's guest is the noted author and managing partner of Hummingbird Valley Films, Charlie Redner, publisher of the Hummingbird Review, a literary magazine published twice a year, Redner represents nine projects, including published novels, nonfiction books, and screenplays, looking for a home at production companies. Welcome, Charlie, to Forgotten Hollywood. Well, thank you for having me, Manny. I'm so happy to be here. I've been on your show. Now, yes. we should mention first that you actually do a show. Maybe I, you could tell us a little I bit about show, the program you do. I do a show called The Right Now Show. We interviewed local authors and sometimes international authors who are coming through town. And uh, we talk about the writing process, how you write novels and books, and, 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 and we have a good time doing that. You keep very, very active. Dare I say you're a very active senior because you are a publisher, yes. you're a writer, yes. you're on television, you do a little bit of disc jockey work. I do. <laughs> uh, tell us about, the, about the, the, the works that you've worked through the Hummingbird uh, Review. Well, that's a, that's a unique story. Um, I started following an author by the name of Luis Alberto Urrea. Luis wrote a book about uh, his great-great-grandmother, I believe it was, who was actually a, a healer in Mexico. It's a fascinating story. I met him in Tucson when I was living there. We became fast friends, and uh, that's almost 10 years ago now. And he said he'd like to be part of a, a, a literary journal someday. So five of us who were also accolades and follow him around, we decided we're just going to do it, and we went up, and next thing you know, we had you know poems and short stories and essays, and we just went out and published it. Why the term hummingbird? What is what is the relevance of the hummingbird review in the hummingbird concept? <laughs> the hummingbird is a very creative creature, and uh, it also uh, mythical. In mythical times, it was the bird of war, and also. It, it's creativity. It, it represents creativity. So we love hummingbirds. Well, your latest project sounds like a real creative venture, but it also is a very altruistic venture. It is. Uh, Down But Never Out is the authorized biography of boxing champion Joey Giardello. We uh, talked about it briefly in our backstory. Here was a gentleman who, as you mentioned, is kind of a, a rocky type oh, figure. Absolutely, positively. Tell us the story and why it interested you and, and how it leads into the concept of Down syndrome and, sure. and, and, the, and the fight and this courageous battle that this, this boxer absolutely. has endured. He was a neighbor of mine in uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Haddonfield, New Jersey, a suburb of Philadelphia. And I met him and I kept hearing these stories about him. He said, that's Joey Giardella. He's the middleweight champ of the world. No kidding. Could be exaggerating. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Wow, that's nice. He also knew the Kennedys and the Shrivers. He helped start the Special Olympics. That's really interesting. The more I got to hear about this man, the more I got interested, and it was all true. I was surprised. <laughs> you know, you hear talk at restaurants and places. And so I went over to his house one day and I said, Joey, did anybody ever do a, a story, a book on you? He said, no, some people came and they talked about a movie, but it never happened. I said, I'd like to do your life story. And he said, 
no, I don't want to do it. And Enrique <laughs> didn't want to do it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I said, no, I don't want to do it because uh, I got in a little trouble in my uh, 20s and I don't want that to come out. I want my kids and grandkids to hear about it. So I, I went away. I went away for 10 years. I moved to Tucson, Arizona. I met a family uh, that I became close to who has a, a Down syndrome daughter, a daughter with Down syndrome. And I was talking to him, I was telling about Joey. I said, I almost wrote a book about this boxer who helped to start the Special Olympics. He says, you gotta call him, he'll do it. I said, no he won't, he doesn't want to. He said, call him up, he'll do it. I called him up, he said, yeah, come on East for the contract, I'll do it. <laughs> 10 years later, I fly back to Philadelphia, he signed the contract, I started interviewing him on the spot, and there's the results. Uh, well, and, and I love the title, Down, but never out right. because it really has that boxing metaphor it also includes the concept yeah. of down right. syndrome tell yeah. us a little bit about what you know about down syndrome well i was going to say first of all also joey claimed that he he, he was never knocked out either he oh well, there you go uh what i learned about down syndrome is that the the children are the most magnificent children in the world i started going to these associations of uh, their buddy marches and i started doing that in tucson and in la and I'm just around the children. And they bring so much joy and love to a family. I, I became enamored with the fact that while these children are technically, you know, they have uh, difficulties, some of them have physical difficulties. The case that I was writing about, Carmen uh, did not have any serious physical difficulties. He held a job for 27 years himself. To me, that's the crux of this story. He held a job at City Hall. He was, a, you know, a maintenance worker. Uh, for 27 years, and I'll tell you, he died this past January, uh, January of 2014 actually, 120 police officers came to the curb and saluted the casket as it drove by. Wow. That you know, should be the ending scene of my, my documentary. I, I, guess, I guess the message you're trying to convey with Down syndrome is that an individual could have the, the, the affliction or the disability, right. yep. but they can live Oh. Practically normal lives. I was even talking to Joey about that when, at a time when, when they started to actually consider getting married. And uh, so he was, oh, no, that can't end. And, well, it's, it's happening. And, and now today, here in L.A., it's so great because you, you see people with Down syndrome in all types of advertisements today. Uh, I love Glee. The young gal is in Glee. Uh, it's, just, it's just marvelous to see that they're getting the exposure. And I can say Joey really broke the mold. He took that child of his everywhere. If his child wasn't allowed in the room, he wouldn't go in it. Let me ask one question here that I think is kind of important. Now, Joey seems to be at the forefront of everything in his career. Boxing. Yep. Uh, he, he mentioned that he was a, a, troublemaker, he, a troublemaker of, of, of the highest order. Yes, he was. And, and, and then he got married, and, and he had a child who had Down syndrome. Right. And then he became at the forefront of the cause to make exactly. people aware of Down syndrome. And we have to give credit to Rosalie Tillelli. His real name was Tillelli. He boxed under the name Giordello because he, he, he uh, borrowed someone's birth certificate so he'd get into the Army at 16 and a half. Uh, Rosalie sat him down. He was at the lowest point in his life. He's in jail for what would be probably considered a hate crime today, even though he didn't do it. I believe he didn't do it, but he, he went to jail. He, he plea bargained and went to jail. While he's in jail, his father dies. He lost his license. He couldn't box. He had no income. He was at, as low as you could get for a man. And uh, he visited his, his father's funeral, and he came home that night, and his wife said to him, you know, he said to her, actually, what are we going to do? She says, we're going to stop thinking about ourselves and think about the boy. Joey bought into it, and the rest is history. Amazing how he turned his life around. And, you know, that's one of those stranger-than-fiction things where, you know, you can watch a movie, right. and actually his real-life story is more is more fascinating than if you if you were to fictionalize it. Absolutely, positively. And I that's the thing about him. He wanted to, and, and he came from Brooklyn, and apparently there's a, one of the religious holidays you carry this, two-ton statue around, and he said he always wanted to do it. He ends up in the far right corner in the primary spot, and lifts it on his shoulders and walks. Everything Joey did, when he got in, he went to the president's inaugural, President Kennedy's inaugural, he ends up on the stage standing next to him and, <laughs> and Eunice Schreiber. And I, how does that happen? It, Things like that happened to Joey, yes. As a matter of fact, he got to be such good friends with the Kennedys mm -hmm. that, in fact, uh, he was involved with the very first Special Olympics. Absolutely. The very first thing that happened at the start of the Special Olympics was that the, uh, the Kennedy Foundation donated a couple hundred thousand dollars to any organization in the country who was doing special education with these children. And it ended up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, uh, when she 
decided to hold the Special Olympics in Chicago, the first person she called was Joey Giardella, Stan Musial, and Jim Brown. There's a collection of high Hall of Famers. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Joey was right in the middle of them, and Carmen was standing next to him. And then that happened in 1968. In 1970, the second Special Olympics, he took his son there, and he won the 300-yard uh, race and won a gold medal, which was the proudest moment in Joey's life. Oh, my gosh. Compared to anything he ever did, including, win he'll say, including winning the crown. I mean, wow. That is exciting. Oh. As a matter of fact, we've got some footage that you provided us, yes. but you said that it, the footage is actually available anywhere, yep. where uh, uh, Eunice Shriver actually introduces the Special Olympics, right. mentions Joey G Giardello. It's, yep. a, it's a nice little piece. W yeah. We'd like to show that piece right now. I'd love to see it again myself. Unlikely as it sounds, that rough and tumble guy was the first person Eunice Kennedy Shriver called when she developed the idea for the Special Olympics. In ancient Rome, the gladiators went into the arena with these words on their lips. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Today, all of you young athletes are in the arena. Many of you will win, but even more important, I know you will be brave and bring credit to your parents and to your country. Let us begin the Olympics. The coaches are introduced. Olympic athletes of the past, great champions, all of them tough competitors. Joey Giardello, former middleweight champion of the world. This is a tale of a father and son that transcends sports and speaks to the ability of a child to transform a parent's heart. Joe became the champ, not only because of his boxing skills, but from the love he shared with his wife for their son born with Down syndrome. Hi, welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery and my name is Yvette Kuglin and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4450. A lot of time, we don't even know what's wrong with us, and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So... We're only a phone call away. Thank you. Welcome back to Forgotten Hollywood. We're here with Charlie Redner, who is actually a publisher, an author, a renaissance man. Huh. And he has written a wonderful <laughs> book called Down But Never Out, the authorized biography of boxing champion Joey Giardello. And um, let us uh, venture into the realm of documentary filmmaking. Nice. Not only have you... Uh, turned your story into a, a wonderful tale of encouragement, hope for those folks who are afflicted with Down syndrome and families who have to endure such a right. such a journey. Yes, but you're also now considering making the story into a documentary. And since this is yep. forgotten Hollywood, this Let's is a story we we need to talk a little <laughs> on the Hollywood aspects of this. Well, I journey. can probably use your help, and you can help me out here a little bit. Yes, uh, this month. I started a new company, the Hummingbird Valley Films, and the first project is going to be a documentary based on my book. And I have to start sit down now and start writing a screenplay. I have been writing a screenplay for about six months now, but it wasn't based on my book alone. It was based on the Joey Giardella story, which has more boxing in it. So I've got a taste of what it's like to, to write a screenplay. And I also have... Um, you know, a, a good screenwriter here in L.A. that would, would help me out when I get past the point. But it's going to be a two-pronged approach, isn't it? It is going to tell the story of his of his life as a boxer right. and then his life as a father yep. who who is a father of a, of a son with Down syndrome. Right. I think the difference between this and if Hollywood ever decided to do the movie would be that the emphasis is going to be on Carmen, Down syndrome, and his life and the 28 years he spent working and... and you know, blazing a trail for other children with uh, with Down syndrome. Whereas I, I imagine Hollywood likes a boxing story. Every year there's a really good boxing story coming out. 
So <clears throat> that was why, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I want to do it as truthful as I can. Mm -hmm. You know Hollywood will take some. But documentary filmmaking, you've got to have a certain brand of truthfulness. You can't take, you really can't take uh, liberties as you would in a nonfiction, let's say a lifetime movie channel piece. I will take no liberties. That Every word in that book is the truth as I know it, as best I could tell it. Um, so that's the same thing what happened in the documentary. Yes, Hollywood and a major motion picture, no talent. I'd even recognize my book. My friend Bob Edelman wrote a book called uh, The Devil's Brigade. William Holden starred in it. And everybody asked him, how does that compare to your book? He says, you can't. It's two different mediums. And, you know, I didn't write the screenplay. So, you know, sometimes Hollywood does do that. And you know better than anyone. <laughs> yes, they can, they, can take a, they can take a piece and they can do certain things to it. And all of a sudden it looks nothing like the story. I don't know if I should tell this story out of school, but I will. In the movie The Hurricane, uh, Ben Bray plays Joey Giardella taking a terrible beating from Hurricane Carter. Joey is the middleweight champ of the world at the time. And I would say that at least 30 blows are delivered to Joey with his hands down at the end of the boxing at the 15th round. And, um, and flat out, it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way that Joey got so upset, he sued the studio and won a defamation of character lawsuit, wow. which is hard to do as a celebrity, but he did win. Right, right, right. Now, how is Joey Giardella, I mean, I would imagine he's a little older now. Uh, how is he going to be involved with the documentary? Uh, unfortunately, uh, he died two years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he oh, did. Oh, no. Yeah, he had congestive heart failure. Oh, okay. So I, I lost him. But I, you know, I knew him for over 10 years. So you're basically carrying on his legacy. And his children. He has four boys. He had four boys. Oh, my. Uh, he was one of five boys that ran in the family. So I'm working with, a, with the youngest son who really wants to see this made, too. And he has access to the family heirlooms, if you will, those, those great uh, films in the backyard, the barbecues, the fishing, and all those things. And I will weave some of that into the story, you know, for authenticity. There's going to be a real element of, of humanness in, in the documentary because it really is a tender story. Oh, it is. It is. And sometimes I call it a docudrama because there's some scenes in there I would really like to hire actors and actually, you know, recreate those scenes as best I know them. Mm -hmm. And I know I can get, you know, children with Down syndrome here in Hollywood. It's really wonderful <laughs> that you are authorized mm -hmm. to be able to carry this legacy of Joey Giardello. Thank you. How did you, is it because you were neighborhood friends? Is it because the book is so well received? Is it a combination of both? What, what is it that... How about if I give credit to my attorney who drafted one of the best contracts ever? Because <laughs> 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 that's where it belongs. I told you... The first contract I took into him, he wouldn't sign it. Not because he, I don't even think he read it. He just didn't want the story told. The second time, I was well prepared. I have an attorney down in, in San Diego that drafted a golden document. He gave me the rights to do everything. One of the happens with an author is if you have a publishing house also assumes the rights of everything, including a motion picture or a documentary or a CD or DVD or whatever. And my right, I retain the rights for everything. And wow. after I published the book the first time, I took my rights back from the publisher. So I now have the publishing rights of the book, plus I have the rights to do anything of any other medium that I want. What's the time frame for the documentary? Are we, are we looking at, is it going to be done this year? Are we looking down maybe next year? Uh, I would like to, well, I'm, I would like to start writing the screenplay this afternoon. <laughs> 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 if I have the time, if I, you know, some of my other duties. And, uh, and have something in the can by the end of the year, yes, absolutely, positively. If not earlier, we would have loved to have something in time for the Special Olympics, which are this July, August here in L.A., but uh, that, that would be pressing it. But we, we could do something. It just depends on you know, how fast I move. And, and the screenwriter I have in mind to work with me in his time frame. You know how these things are years out in advance when you're hiring some of these people in Hollywood. Absolutely. But, but the story seems so compelling. Have you gotten interest from Hollywood? We have had interest in Hollywood. We've had interest from Hollywood for over two years, but there's a lot of talk in Hollywood and not times a, a lot of action. So and that that is that is the case for many. For hurry many up projects. and wait. It's just like the army. It reminds me of my military. You know, hurry up and wait. Oh yeah, we're going to do that film, and you, you know, six months goes by, and yeah, we're talking about it. So they're still talking about it. I did go uh, to New York in this past January, 
and talk to people who could find the funds for this. And they were very interested. As a matter of fact, one of them was a, a relative uh, of the Boxer. So I have very high optimistic hopes that it, it will become a major motion picture. Well, if I know you at all, you when you when you set your mind to something, you really um, do get things accomplished. One of the things that we did together yes. as collaborators, just to change gears, as we have only got a couple more minutes here, sure. is that uh, uh, you wrote a, a review of Hollywood-related stories, and yes. you gave me that phone call and then followed yep. up with an email saying, Manny, would you like to be included in this Hollywood uh, review? That's right. <laughs> and it, part of the Hummingbird Review, it's called Hollywood, and I was able to write a, a story called Evolution of a Screenplay, which exactly. I, uh, which was met very, very uh, nicely oh. with, with, with good reception, as all these stories from the Hummingbird Review. Do you have yeah. any other Hummingbird Reviews that are coming out soon, or uh, do you have I, one that the, just the, came out? The, the fifth one is in the can right now, as you will. It's, it's written, and I'm turning it over to the editor in about three days. So there'll be another one within, you know. What's the a subject month or two. matter? Uh, we, I don't have a theme per se for this one. I didn't start out with themes. It just they started to happen. I mean, the Hollywood theme came because they were shooting uh, a film uh, in in my cousin's house, and <laughs> and she got you know she got to meet uh, a lot of uh, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. They were shooting Silver Lining Playbook in her house. Wow. So, you know, I started getting daily reports on how that was going, and I said, wow, I'd like to do a Hollywood theme. And then I talked to our other editors, and they came up with ideas, and, and we had a screenwriter who did uh, how to convert a book into a screenplay. So it, it just worked out. Uh, the, the one before that is based on Africa. I just started getting poems from, from uh, poets in Africa, and I said, well, let's do an African theme. And I had a friend of mine who's from Morocco, and he... He wrote a beautiful piece about the Amazon, the original Indians, and, and uh, the Cherokee Indians, and uh, how they have stones. They have the same kind of habits that they have of the of the uh, Amazons over in in, in the uh, Atlas Mountains. There, it's amazing. So they don't all have themes, but um, it's nice when one comes around because it makes it easier to. Well, I can recommend, <laughs> heartily recommend, not just the Hollywood-themed Hummingbird Review, but all of the Hummingbird uh, Reviews. They are absolutely magnificent in its composition. Kind. No, no, really, the, the, oh. the stories, you, you, you're, you're, you're yeah. the one that's kind because right. what happens is that you derive from other folks, right. and then you just compile everything right. together, and you give everybody full credit. Absolutely, and oh, you, absolutely, and 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 you put to, you put them together. You're the architect, and it's a well, really wonderful thing. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at how you can participate in Down but Never Out. And I want to thank our good oh, wow. friend here, Charlie thank Redner, you. for coming down wow. and joining us to thank talk about so Joey Giardello and his fabulous story of boxing and, of course, uh, his son with Down syndrome. Let's take a look at how you can participate here on Forgotten Hollywood. Joey Giardello helped to change a lot of lives for the better by changing the mindset of an entire generation. And now we need your help. We have the support of some of the most prestigious people and organizations in the country, but we also need you, your support. There's a lot to do and we want to do it quickly. We'd like to premiere this movie during the 2015 Special Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Our goal to meet that deadline is $250,000, and we're reaching out to organizations and individuals that not only have experienced the challenges, triumphs, and adversity associated with special needs children, but also the people like you who know the value of passing this message, this story forward. We want you to take this journey with us. Support our project, make it your project as well. And we'll take you on our exciting journey, a journey you'll always be proud to have been a part of. Get involved. See more information about the life and times of Joey Giardello. Go to our website, climb on board and hold on. As Peter Pan said, it's going to be an awfully big adventure. We need your help. Make a contribution, whatever you can afford, and make a difference, the way Joey did. The unseen blessing of adversity, the story of a real life Rocky, a man who beat the odds of getting stuck on the wrong track, a man who fought his way to the top for the love of his son and family, and who helped change the world. Thank you for joining us on Forgotten Hollywood here on Therapy Cable. And remember, let's never forget, I'm Manny Pacheco. Mm -hmm.